Today we're checking out a new affordable knife from Sencut. Sencut does some of, if not the best affordable knives you can buy. This is the Sencut Omniform. And the way I'm translating it is, is basically an all-purpose knife, you know, with the name Omniform. Beautiful blade shape that's kind of a hybrid. It's a little bit of a clip point, but a little bit of a sheep's foot. It definitely drops down and it doesn't clip. So it's kind of like a, a modified shape between a drop point, clip point, and a sheep's foot. Um, very, very good looking blade shape and it is a full flat grind. So this thing's going to slice so, so good. And we're gonna talk about that here in just one second. It has 9CR 18 MOV steel, G10 scales with super grippy G10, good access to the lock bar, very smooth on the drop. And I know you see only one deployment. However, this thing is very easy to use multiple deployments. I can actually do it with my pinky as far as the reverse flick goes. You can thumb flick it, you can thumb roll it. Um, obviously you can easily reverse flick it. And then obviously it has the flipper. So in my opinion, it definitely has more than one opening deployment, but you know, you can uh, say it's a single um, action knife or whatever you want to call it, but super snappy. Very, very good. You know, and even though I can reverse flick it, it's just because the blade is sticking out so much. It has nothing to do with the detent being light because the detent is not light. It's got a good, solid detent. Um, now, the handle, like I said, it's very, very grippy. It has a deep carry clip that's not inset, but it does have flat screws, so nothing getting in the way, and it is reversible. TA hardware all the way around. This thing's a big knife, definitely a large knife. Now, I can't help but bring up the iconic Ontario Rat 1 because this knife just reminds me of the Rat 1 for some reason. I kind of feel like it's a Rat 1 killer in a way. Um, now, while they have some similarities, they also have a ton of differences. One, the blade shape and, and grind on the Senka is superior to the Rat 1. As far as being a cutting tool goes, this has a big belly drop point, which in order to get to the tip, you have to lift your elbow very high. With the send cut, you can keep your elbow nice and low, which gives you a lot more leverage into the tip and you know through whatever you're cutting. So right there, you know, the upper hand, it goes to the send cut. Send cut's also much slicier, 15 thousandths behind the edge, while the Rat 1 in this case is 30 thousandths, but I'm sure it started out at like 24, 25 thousandths, because mine has been sharpened quite a bit. But regardless, much slicier. The blade is a little bit more narrow. While they're both full flat grinds, the send cut is a broader blade, which is going to make it transition. Because they basically have about the same blade stock thickness. The Rat one might be, yeah, the Rat one's a little bit thicker. But, so this one has a thinner blade and a broader blade. So just much more slice here. The ergonomics are very similar between the two. So that is one thing that they do have in common. And then the choil areas, the way they did the choil is very similar. Now, this one has a flat spot while this one has the flipper tab, so that is, you know, one little difference. Good access to the lock bar on both of them. Deep carry clip on this one, that's going to be debatable which one you would prefer. I think the majority of people would prefer the deep carry clip. As far as the blade steels go, in this case, the send cut is superior. However, um, because this is OS 8, this is 9CR, the RAT one does come in D2 and S35VN. So it's been around a lot longer, so it's had an opportunity to come out in a bunch of different steels while the sun cut is brand new. So it hasn't had an opportunity yet. So, but all in all, I just, you know, the, the, for some reason, they just reminded me of each other. Now, this one's made in Taiwan, so some people might put that into account. And then this is on washers. So if you really like washers, then you're probably going to like the Rat 1 a little bit better. However, I think the majority of people are going to pick ceramic cage bearings over washers because the action is just so much better on ceramic caged bearings on a liner lock knife. So the action is way better on the sun cut um not that the rat one's bad but it's not going to be smooth you know it's got a snappy opening but you know it's still on washers um and then like you know that's going to be your preference you know if we would like washers or bearings but anyways it was just something i thought about now one other one really quick i want to talk about the new Savivi. what the heck was the name of it i always forget the name of this one the vexillum 
<laughs> the new Sabivi Vexillum. Now, the Sabivi Vexillum has a similar size to the Sen Cut. They're both big knives. However, the Sen Cut is a lot more lighter duty. Oh, you know, a lot lighter and a little bit slicier. While this one's still very slicey, gets down nice and thin. It is more of a brute. It's definitely a little bit thicker, a bigger. The, the gun grips make it, you know, it's heavier. Uh, the gun grips make it very grippy. Just all in all, this to me is a good example of a tough EDC knife. Not going to say hard use, but a tough EDC knife. Um, that's also going to be plenty, plenty slicey because it's very slicey. The tip is not too thick, so it's going to be very easy to do utility cuts. The tip is nice and low. Both of these are going to be phenomenal users. However, this one is going to be more expensive. It does have a superior steel, Nitro V, 9CR. Uh, but look at this action. The thumb studs, look at how big these thumb studs are. These, this thing is a behemoth, but man, is it good. I really, really like this thing. The more, the longer I have it and the more I, I'm using it and checking out, the more and more I like this knife. Um, same goes for the Sen Cut. You know, they're both really, really well done, but yeah. So the behind the edge thickness is about 15 thousandths. Ooh, it's about 10 right there. Yeah, about 15, 14, 15 thousandths behind the edge. So... You know, it's nice and thin, nice and slicey. The blade stock thickness on these are usually 120 thousandths. Yeah, about 120. So very, very slicey, especially with this full flat grind. And with these ergonomics, man, it just makes it to where this thing cuts so, so good. This is a slicer. And then you can um, obviously choke up and really bear down if you need to. So you can get a lot of force down into that cut. And then as far as utility cuts go, you know, obviously the tip is lower than the center of the pivot. So very, very good at utility cuts. As you can see. <laughs> It is very, very good. So this is going to be something you can easily use to open up boxes and, you know, cut into things. Just because, you know, the, the tip lands where it does. So rope cutting, this really shows me, one, how good the ergonomics are, but two, how good the, the, um, the edge geometry is. If I can push right through it like that, I know the geometry is good. And then while I'm doing that, because it does take some force, so you're really gonna feel it in your palm. No knife is going to be extremely comfortable, but this one's about as comfortable as you could get for a folder doing this. And then you can also get your finger right in the back and kind of just do like a push cut straight down like that. Yeah, that works really, really well. So this is one of the better knives that I've used as far as a folding knife goes for cutting rope. However, with sharpening, you will cut into the plunge grind because as you can see right there, it's definitely going to, the stone's going to go into that plunge grind when I go to hit the back of the bevel. And this being a coated blade, you are going to see that. Is it that big of a deal? Not so much on a budget knife like this. So maintenance, edge maintenance should be very easy with this one because of how thin it is behind the edge. That's the beauty with thin geometry. It's much easier to take care of and maintain. Now that means in most cases, you're not going to want to be too tough on the edge. I mean, you're not going to want to chop into metal and, you know, cut staples and stuff like that. But as long as you're using it for basic cutting purposes, it's gonna be just fine. And it'll be very easy for you to sharpen and easy for you to keep sharp because of the thin geometry. As far as negatives go, I know a lot of you think I'm gonna go in on the plunge grind, which I am, but I'm not gonna go in on it because I understand 
the, what they were going for here. But what I'm going to talk about is I wish they would have done the plunge grind straight down. So you see how it tapers? It starts here and it tapers down to the edge. I wish they would have just did it straight down so there was no taper at all. So it just transitioned from this thickness directly down to the grind thickness. That way I can sharpen up to the plunge grind without cutting into it. In this case, I'm going to hit this plunge grind. It will smile. And you know, after the steel gets up to about right here, I'm just gonna sharpen up the blade. Not a big deal. It's, you know, it's an affordable knife. So I'm not even that worried about it. They tried to leave you a little spot for your finger. Um, and you can, you know, do a pretty good choke up grip. You can also choke back, which will prevent, prevent you from slipping up the blade. So, you know, I understand what they were trying to go for here. And, you know, I think they did a pretty good job with it. I just think they could have done that plunge grind straight down or straight in so that, you know, we didn't have to worry about that for sharpening. And you would have gotten the same thing, the same results, just a little bit better. The clip could have been inset. You know, yeah, it would have uh, made him put a cutout on this side, but hey, I like it. I'd rather see it inset. Not that big of a deal. It's a slight nitpick. As far as send cut goes, they don't usually have very many negatives. As long as you like the knife, the design, the style, they usually do everything pretty well. From the centering being perfect, the lockup is, you know, always solid. Uh, you know, the action's always good. So they, they, Basically check just about all the boxes as far as quality goes for the most part, uh, as long as you like the style, the size, and all of that. Um, so all in all, there's not very much negative here, if, and if any, to be honest, if any. It's a great budget knife. And I think that this thing, because of the size of it, um, y you could use this for a lot of things. You know, it might, maybe it'll be a little bit too big for some people, but in my opinion, man, you could really, really put this thing to work. But there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.